Hallelujah. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, once again, we'll thank you for the opportunity to gather together. We'll thank you because anywhere the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. We ask as the Word of God is being preached today, that illumination, revelation will fill every heart. We ask that we'll come to a deeper place in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Firstly, I wanted to remind you that tomorrow, Next Level Prayer continues. It's going to be really, really powerful. And as we pray together, I want to invite your friends to join us. And this also, I want to remind you, um, from the 1st of September to the 21st of September, we have um, our annual fasting and praying. It's 21 days of intervention. 21 days of intervention. Glory to God. It's 21 days of intervention. It's going to be really powerful. I really want to participate. I want to participate. And let me say something. Um, we're going to have just a very special three days for those of you that attend the Lekki Church. It's going to be really powerful. And more announcements to come up. And throughout all the Sundays in September, at the first service, we're having the first service as a turning point service. It's a service dedicated to prayer, to faith teaching, and to ministry to people that have different needs. So it's going to be really powerful. So if you have a specific need, the first service is something you want to consider at this time. Glory to God. All right, let's turn our Bibles to Mark chapter 16, and we're going to read from, we're going to read verse 17. Throughout this month, we've been teaching on the Holy Spirit, and if this is the first of the teaching you've seen, you want to go back, and you want to watch the teaching, because it's really powerful. Last Sunday, as I began to minister, it was really, really powerful. People in diverse nations of the world were getting for the Holy Ghost. I got feedbacks from several countries how the power of God actually touched them. And I'm saying so to you because this morning I wanted to also just open up your heart. And if you're watching, if you're listening, I don't know how you're connecting, you can also invite your friends to join. So let's turn our Bibles to Mark chapter 16 verse 17. And this morning I will be talking about the benefits of speaking or praying in the Spirit. What is praying in the Spirit, which is all the world called praying in tongues. And what are the benefits of praying in the Spirit. Bible says, Mark chapter 16 verse 17. He says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. And they shall speak with new tongues. Now take note of something. The Bible says that, it says this is a sign that follows those that believe. It says they will speak with new tongues. So every Christian, not some Christian, every Christian has the right to believe God to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now let's slow down a little and get deep into this because... A lot of people speak in tongues, but a lot of people do not know what it means to speak in tongues. And so what they do is that there is an exercise of spiritual facility, but it's limited in expression and limited in benefit because they do not understand what it means exactly. So, first of all, what is when the Bible says they are speaking new tongues, it means that they will speak in new language. You must understand this. Language shows four things. Number one, language shows origin. So when you hear someone speaking French, you would probably know that they are from a francophone country or from the or of or for their they are from France. The second thing is that language shows association. The third thing is that language shows tribe and language shows civilization. So now that we have come into Christ, there is a new language that shows that we are not like the other people, that we are from a different civilization. We are not of the natural origin. We are from the supernatural origin. The second thing I wanted to notice is the fact that when the Bible says, they shall speak in tongues or they shall have a new language. They are different kind of, we know, there are different kind of languages in the scripture. Number one, the first one is the natural language. Everybody has a natural language. Now, the second one is this. When it's what we experience in Acts chapter 2 verse 4. I will not go into a lot of these details because um, Acts chapter 2 verse 4. The Bible says this. Bible says, so the first one is the natural tongue. So when we say tongues, there are four kinds of tongues. The first one is natural tongue. The natural tongue is what you were born with. Your brain spoke to you. You learned it naturally. The second one is this. It's other tongues. It's other tongues. So look at Acts chapter 2 verse 4. The Bible says, and when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they began to speak with other tongues. The word other here is hethros. Hethros means another kind. No wonder in Acts chapter 2, the people when they heard them, they heard them speak in different other languages. They heard them speak in another kind. The word is hethros. Now number 
three is what we see here in Mark chapter in Mark chapter sixteen. In Mark chapter sixteen, in verse seventeen, the Bible says that in Mark chapter sixteen, in verse seventeen. The Bible says that, and they shall speak with new tongues. Now, in Mark chapter 16, verse 17, it's very different from what you have in Acts chapter 2. The Bible says they shall speak with new tongues. New tongues here is the word is um the, the word here is unknown. So it says that these believers will speak in tongues that has never been heard before. It's the same word when the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. A species that has never existed before. So when the believer speaks in tongues, he's speaking a language that has never existed before. What we saw in Acts chapter 2 was this. Not only they speak in new tongues, they spoke in other tongues. The Greek word other tongues spoke about hethros. Hetros means different kind of languages. New, new, as expressed in Mark chapter six and in the book of, and in Mark chapter six and in First Corinthians chapter fourteen verse two, talks about a new language that is unknown at all. It's brand new. That's why the Bible also says, "If any man be in Christ, is a new creation. He has never existed before." So when a believer speaks in this new language, he has never ex existed before. That has never existed before. The next thing is um, is the diverse kinds of tongues. Now, First Corinthians chapter twelve tells us that there are diverse kinds of tongues. Now, the word diverse is that they are the word kind means they are different expression of this language. Is different expression of this language. So let's get into the issue of tongues. Some people always ask a question, and they ask this simple question and say something like this. They say, um, when it comes to tongues, how can I speak? So the first question is this. Can every Christian speak in tongues? The Bible says in Mark chapter 16, they signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, and in my name they shall speak with tongues. So that's said to it. If you are a believer, you have a blood-bought right to speak in tongues. Now, people always ask this question, and this is a confusion. And I also express this confusion. They say something like, okay, if I'm meant to speak in tongues, can I just speak in tongues at will? So when I got born again, you know, several years ago, this is the way people spoke in tongues. We all will be praying, 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 and there will be a moment of spiritual hijack, and they will just be hijacked. And you get just say, so we're all praying, Father, thank you, Father, thank you. You say, hey, Kuri, ah, 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 and we come out. And it, it was almost as if the person, when it came to speaking in tongues, neither the spiritual hijack because he couldn't do it himself. But what does the Bible say? So people always believe that if I want to speak in tongues, it's going to be that moment of hijack. What does the Bible say? Acts chapter 2 verse 4. The Bible says, Bible says this. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues. How? As the Spirit gave them utterance. Notice something. They didn't speak in tongues because they were hijacked. They began to speak in tongues as an expression of their will. First Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter 14. In verse 14. First Corinthians chapter 14 verse 14. What did Paul say? Paul says, for, for I will pray in an unknown tongues. My spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Verse 15 says this. What is it then? It says, I will pray with the spirit. It says, I will pray with the spirit. And I will pray with the understanding also. Before you say that, you know, maybe something's going to happen to him, it balanced it. He said, the same way I initiate the prayer in my understanding, that is the same way I initiate the prayer in the spirit. So, if I say to you and say, let us pray, you will get up right now and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Paul said, the same way I can initiate a prayer in my understanding, I can also initiate a prayer in the spirit. Why am I saying this to you? For you to know that you can initiate praying in tongues by yourself. Verse 14 says, For if I pray in tongues, my spirit prayeth. It says, but if I pray in tongues. He didn't say if I had an hijack moment. So when we pray in tongues, we can by ourselves choose and really exercise our will and pray in the spirit. So I say, how can you do that? Because remember, speaking in tongues and the Holy Ghost is a gift. That is already given to you. So if it's a gift that is given to you, this gift today is at your disposal. You can literally, literally use it. 
Now, the question is this. Someone says, well, I speak in tongues, but it's not so formed. I see some people speak in tongues, and I feel intimidated. The thing is that every spiritual gift is developed by use. The moment you begin to use your gift continually, you see that spiritual gift developing, 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 developing. And if you are just having a few slippers in the spirit, that's not something to be shy about. It's for you to develop. The more you develop, what will happen to you? You'll find yourself expressing yourself more. Someone also asks, if I'm speaking in tongues, how can I be sure that I'm saying the right thing? First Corinthians 14 verse 2 says, he that speaketh in tongues speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understand him, however in the spirit it speaks mysteries. That means when we're speaking in tongues, we are not meant to understand what we are saying. We are meant to trust that the Holy Spirit will take those words and pray be a proper prayer. So as we look at this this morning, one of the things, and this is where I want to dwell today. I want to dwell on the value of the importance of praying in the Holy Spirit. The value of the importance of praying in the Holy Spirit. The first thing I want us to look at is this. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And we're going to look at something very, very, very powerful. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 in verse 4. He says... He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edify himself. The Greek word there means that the person that speaks in an unknown tongue, it charges himself like a battery. I don't know if you have tried to start a car before. The car can walk. Everything is okay in the car. But guess what? The power, the battery has run out. No matter how powerful the car is, if the battery is not working, everything will not work. And God is saying this, that even in your spirit, there seems to be like a battery inside. No matter the power of God in your spirit that you want to release to cause your business to go far to change the situation. If the power is down, you need to be powered up. And what do you do? This is what the simple thing you do. If your battery is low, you get, you know, you can easily get a you can easily get a charger cable. And when you get the charger cable, this is low battery. You find a way to connect it to power and connect it with this. And you know when you do that, you know what happens? When you do that and you begin to make the connection, what happens is that all of a sudden, this battery that was low begins to come alive. Some of you, you need to be charged. And that's why when something goes wrong, you, you what, what's happening to you? When something goes wrong, you're crying, you're overwhelmed because there needs to be a charge. All you have to do is not to cry. All you have to do is to get to the charger and charge and charge and charge and charge and charge and charge. And as you charge, you know what happens to you? You'll begin to feel the build up on the inside of you. Maybe it's a long time that you spend some hours to pray in tongues. One of the beautiful things about praying in tongues is this. There's a charge up. It's just like your phone. If you use your phone all day without charging up, it will run down a battery. But when you use your phone, you charge it, then the phone comes back alive. Have you noticed some people some people, they've used their battery so low that when they charge, it doesn't really go fast. Sometimes you have to put up the phone and charge just because of the depth you have gone through. Listen to me. The world is very draining. The same with the phone. When you call this person, use the social media page, use that social media page, it's draining your battery. The same with the world is when you hear bad news, it drains power. When you go through that challenge, it drains power. When you go through this, it drains energy. What do you go back? You go back to the place of prayer and you get Get some charge and you power up. You know why? Because you realize that without powering up, nothing significant can happen. You want to change. If you want to change, you have to power up. You have to power up. You have to power up. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. He said, for he that speaketh in tongues edified himself. He says, when I speak in tongues, I build myself up. The book of Jude says this. He said, praying in the Holy Ghost, building upon your most holy faith. Listen to me. The reason why some people have issues is this. They are trying to build in the physical what they have not built in the spiritual. He says, he says, praying in the Holy Ghost, building upon your most holy faith. If your faith is low, there's a way to build it. I want you to help me, please. Come, come and help me. This is what this looks like. And this is what it looks like. Can you put one block here, please? Yeah, that's one block here. And this will you, you're trying to build your finance. But all you have is one block. Oh, let me show you the scripture. Just wait one minute. <laughs> the book of Jude. The book of Jude. Jude has just one chapter. The book of Jude. Verse 20. 
He says, but ye beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith. Someone says, how do I? You're trying to believe God for a marriage. The doctor said you have a fibroid. And you're trying to say, how can I get the miracle? If you can only build up your faith. Hallelujah. Hey, you're going for an interview. If you can only build up your faith. I, I know that the odds are against you, but faith is the victory that overcomes the world. He said, this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. How, what do you do? You build up your faith. They say, you know, at your age, no, you can't get married. Build up your faith. How do you build up your faith? All you have is what? And you're wondering, but what I want to do, I need more than this. He said, how do you build up your faith? He said, as you're praying tongues, put one more there. As you're praying tongues, you're building up that business. As you're praying tongues, put one more there. You're building up on that business. People wonder, how come you're bolder? How come you're stronger? Because I've been building upon my faith. Hallelujah. I've been building upon my faith. I've been building upon my faith. I know it's not my power. I know it's not by might, it's by the Spirit of God. Yay. Let me say something to you. Have you ever felt weak before? Maybe you're praying about getting married. Maybe you're praying for capital. Maybe you're praying for a job. And you just feel as if what is going on. And it seems as if your faith is thinning out. He said, what you do is not to cry. He said, what you do is not to complain. He said, that faith you have, you can build upon it. Hallelujah. He said, building upon your faith. How? By praying in the Holy Ghost. Lift up your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Lift up I'm building up my faith because I'm in that job. I'm building up my faith because I'm in that pregnancy. I'm building up my faith because I'm in that marriage. I'm building up my faith. Hallelujah. My faith is expanding. My faith is expanding. He's becoming aggressive. In the name of Jesus. I sink every doubt. I sink every doubt. Shabanto. 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 In Jesus' name. Oh, I love this. He says, but you, beloved, building on your most holy faith. How do you take the faith you have and build on it? This faith was small. How did it get here? By praying in the Holy Ghost. They say, the fund is not coming. He said, the man cancelled on it. And you want to feel weak. You say, I will not talk doubt. I will not talk unbelief. You go back to your room. And they say, what will you do? Give me 10 minutes. How? I'm building upon my faith in the Spirit. The guy you've dated for five years comes and says, I can do it again. Everybody thinks you're going to run mad. Everybody thinks you'll sink in the depression. He will say, no, I'm not going to sink in the depression. I will not let the fear come in. I will not let the doubt come in. I will not let the shame come in. I'm going to build upon my faith. Faith always wins. He said, this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. you get news from the doctor. And they say, we're well, sorry. Your kidney is not working well. You have to do dialysis all your life. You say, doctor, thank you. But I've got something more superior. As you were taking the report, tears were coming down your eyes. Your husband looked at you and said, honey, I don't know what you're going to do. Before the fear runs in, you take some step back on. Building upon your faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Listen, there's something about praying in the Holy Ghost that stirs of faith. And let me tell you something, eh? I don't know if you know, there's some drinks that you drink, that when you drink that they say shake well. You know what they say shake well? Because the residual, the, 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 the skin substance of the drink are settled. And that's how faith is sometimes. When faith is not, it is, you know, it's not shaking well, it's settled. And God says that if you want to stir up your faith, it's a praying the Holy Ghost. It's a praying the Holy Ghost. Every time you see us praying the Holy Ghost, we're stirring up something. Oh, we're stirring up something. We are stirring up something. We're stirring up something. We heard what they say, but we're stirring up something. Glory to God. So as we're praying the, in the Holy Ghost, come, sir, build some more blocks for me. Oh, glory to God. You notice. Ah, you notice. Look at that. 
We are building more blocks. We are building more blocks. Yes, sir. Formerly, when it was one block, you didn't notice it. Now, what happened? Now, look at the block. You can notice it now. How can you notice it? Because now, the faith is building something. When you start out, you know, and you start out in that company, people can notice your progress. They can't notice what is happening. Because it's so insignificant. It's so small. Don't give up now. Keep praying in the Holy Ghost. 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 Glory to God. Oh, Romans chapter 8. This is very powerful. Romans chapter 8. Ah, as we're praying in the Holy Ghost, we get charged up like a battery. Hallelujah. Ah, no more battery dying. No more low battery mode. No more low battery mode. Some people, their life is in low battery mode. You know, when your phone is on low battery mode, some, some functions are no longer operation because it's on low battery mode. You wonder why this is not working. It's on low battery mode. You wonder why that's not working. It's on low battery mode. It's okay. If it's on low battery mode, we've got a charger. All we have to do is to go to the charger. Hallelujah. All we have to do is to go to the charger. Hallelujah. And when you charge it, you charge it. That's the, you charge it to yourself. You, boom, 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 boom. That's the flow of power. Hey, something, something is shaking. Something is shaking all over me. Hey, hey, you know, listen, to me some people just chat for five minutes that's not enough because when you chat for five minutes it will lose in time you need to have a full charge you need a full charge a solid charge you stay there until it's fully powered up he said battery full glory to god i said glory to god i said glory to god i said glory to god why do we pray in the holy ghost romans chapter 8 let me see if I can give you two more. Verse 26. Oh, this is powerful. He said, likewise, the spirit helps our infirmity. Question, what does it mean by infirmity? That's an old English word, meaning limitation, meaning weaknesses. He said, the spirit helps our weaknesses. Why? He says, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Listen to what he didn't say. He didn't say, we don't know what to pray for. He says, we don't know what we should pray for as we ought. What does that mean? I know I should pray for the funding. But the way to go about the funding, I do not know. So, in my blind state, I keep just saying, Father, grant me favor. But meanwhile, there are some intricacies. Meanwhile, there are some dynamics that I'm in, the, uh, that I'm in darkness about. He says, as I'm praying, the Holy Ghost partners with me. The Holy Ghost knows what I don't know. So, in the place of prayer, he begins to direct my prayer. He begins to direct my prayer. As, as I'm praying, this is what I'm doing. I'm praying, Father, grant me financial favor. He will direct it this way. I wonder, why am I going this way? Because the Holy Ghost knows the way to the answer. Listen to what he says. Verse 20. <laughs> he says this. He says, likewise, the spirit helps. The praying in tongues is help. He said the spirit assists our limitations. How? He says, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. One time, one time, one of our leaders in church, he said, we're just at work. And his mind just drifted to his cousin that was living with him. And he just felt an unrest. But he didn't know what was wrong. And he just began to pray. Logavana, Bangoloni, Ambogavana, Embawamando, Mangaba, Kunemara Itamada. All for him to get home. And the next thing the, the cousin said was that, oh, I entered this bus and was kidnapped. They were taking me away. He said, and when they got to places where they, they, where they were killing people, the person looked at me and said, we can't use him for sacrifice. Then let him, let him go back, let him, take him back to where he came from. And when she said so, this is the power of the Holy Ghost. When she said so, listen to me. The guy said, but I know I'm not born again. I know I'm not close to God. What did they see? His brother said, his, his, the, the brother said, he said, at the moment when you were kidnapped, I felt a stirring to pray for you. God used his prayer to deliver him. The question is this. What about if he did not pray? That guy could have been dead. You know, let me give another example. You know, the, 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 there was a there was a the, the son that had a situation, and it had to do with work, and as he was praying, it was praying and praying and praying, praying that 
a certain person would change his mind because he thought the person was a problem. He didn't realize that the problem that person had was because another boss had influenced his mind and insisted against sanction against him. But as he found himself praying for the person, he found the prayer, the Holy Ghost redirecting his prayer in tongues to pray about somebody else, only for that thing to come out. And he said, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Because there's no way I would have known that that other person was the root cause of this problem. That's what prayer does. Listen, sometimes you are thinking this is it. Because we are humans. There's a way we calculate things. There's a way we think about, oh, this funding should come from here. So you are praying. This ABC company provide funding. But when you start praying the Holy Ghost, you just find yourself say, Father, thank you because the company is coming from XYZ company. But you are praying for ABC. But the Holy Ghost is where to come from. Glory to God. He said the Holy Ghost assists us. It's time for you to let the Holy Ghost assist you. It's time to let the Holy Ghost you let, let the Holy Ghost assist you. Some of you are going through a lot of issues. The problem is that you are not praying about what you need to pray for the right way. You are praying about marriage, but you're praying according to how God wants it. You're praying for a job. Are you praying according to how God wants it? You're praying for a breakthrough. Are you praying according to how God wants it? You're praying for your finances. Are you praying according to how God wants it? Oh, there's one thing to pray by your wisdom. But there's another thing to pray by the wisdom of the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. You know, you know what it means to do an exam? And the paper, what you wrote was exactly what Joshua said. Pray according to manuscript. Let the Holy Ghost take over. I say let the Holy Ghost take over. When the Holy Ghost take over your prayer life, it can never be boring. Oh no, never. 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 <laughs> I, I, I saw a story online recently. And those couple had gotten married and lost a lot of weight. And their, and their friend said, how come you got married and lost weight? And they said, oh, there's a lady that, there's a small girl that they gave us when I married my wife. That that's a custom. And this girl is meant to be like, we're meant to raise her up like our daughter. But the girl belongs to an occultic group. And every night when we're, when we're about to sleep, the girl will just put the legs on the wall and begin to oppress us. I said, so how did that affect you? He said, so every night, the person said, he said, we have to be doing night vigil upon night vigil. And because that we don't get sleep, we're losing weight. And, and the person said, wow, is that the problem? Why not let's take this other spiritual dimension? And he said, we never even that was possible. Because in prayer... There are effective ways to pray. But there are more effective ways to pray. What I'm saying to you is that the Holy Ghost can direct you to a more effective way to pray. Glory to God. I said glory to God. And 1 John. 1 let, let Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7. Oh, glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7. Mm. See what the Bible says. Oh, this is good. Maybe we should jump. We should, we should come to verse um, verse six. Paul said in First Corinthians chapter two, verse six. However, we speak the mis- we speak wisdom. Now, watch what it says. He said, "We speak wisdom amongst them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world to come to naught." Verse seven says, "But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery." What is the wisdom of God? Even the hidden wisdom which God had ordained before the world unto our glory. Verse 8 says, which none of the princes of the world knew. For if they had known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. So when he says wisdom here, he was saying we're speaking the plan of God. He called it wisdom, the plan of God. Now look at the next thing. Verse 9 says, but as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has he entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed it to us. For, to us. By a spirit. For the spirit search. Now take note of that. The spirit search all the things of God. The spirit search all things. Yea. The deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man. Save the spirit of a man. Which is in him. Even so the things of, of God. Know it no man. But the spirit of God. Oh glory to God. So what does the Bible say here? He says, there are mysteries. Take note, there are mysteries. And Paul says, as we speak, we are speaking this mystery. What are these mysteries? The plans of God. Now, let me show you something. When we pray, let me show you what we're praying about. First Corinthians chapter 14. <laughs> chapter 14. 
verse 2. See what the Bible says. St. Paul, that spoke about that in chapter 2, verse 14. He said, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understand him, but in the spirit is speaking mysteries. What am I telling you today? When you speak in tongues, this is a powerful, this, this is what I'm going to close. When you speak in tongues, when you speak in those tongues, kama, sabara, gada, you know what you're doing? You're speaking the plans and the purpose of God. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 2 says, the spirit search the deep things of God. Let me show you, let me get on this computer. Let me show you what speaking in tongues does. This, listen, let me explain it first of all before I get on the computer. Have you noticed something? There's nothing about your future that your spirit does not know. Your spirit knows who you should marry, where you will make money from, where you will lose money from. He knows those things. So what happens when you speak in tongues? What happens is that we begin to search through the spirit. It's like when I go on the computer and I go on Google, I want to show you something. And I go on Google. If I go on Google right now, right now I'm on Google and I say, best diets. If I say, best diets. You know, and I put it there. You know something? I did not, it was not when I asked for best diet that the information go to Google. The information had always been there. It was just waiting for an activation to bring it out. You know what is happening? There's information about your future already. There's information about your finance already. There's information about your job already. There's information ahead of you. All you have to do is to pull it out. How do you pull it out? By the time you begin to pray in tongues, the spirit begins to search. He begins to search. He begins to search. He begins to search. Let me tell you how this works. This, and this is, I want to tell you practically how to do this. When I'm praying in tongues about something, I try to pray in tongues and pray in my mind. So let's say I want to pray about, maybe I want to pray about a project. As I'm praying in tongues, I don't allow my mind to wander. I calm my mind down. I use my mind to be praying about the, that project. You know what I notice? As I'm praying, all of a sudden, the Lord will say, why not ask this person? Why not talk to that person? And those will be the next step I need to make. The challenge, and this is why a lot of people just speak in tongues for nothing. Because when they speak in tongues, there's edification, but there's no direction. So how do you speak in tongues? As you're praying in tongues and you zero your thoughts in it on something, listen, pay attention to the thought that coming. You know why? The thought at the, the thought at the revelation of the next thing you must do concerning what you're praying about. So let's say you're praying about a project or about a financing or you're praying about a house or about a marriage or about some kind of situation. As you're praying in the Holy Spirit, I need you to be paying attention on the inside. Why? The Bible says the Spirit is searching. As you're praying, there's a search see there's a such engine going on within you and as you're praying so you're not just praying you're speaking mysteries so watch this now so i'm praying about this thing and the holy ghost begins to pray as the holy ghost begins to pray the holy ghost begins to shed light in my mind on what i must do what i must hear what i must know about the situation glory to god one time we had the decision to make when our ministry just started and as i was praying about it i just felt you know I didn't even know all of this that time. As I prayed, I just felt, I should do this. And as I did it, there was an explosion. And the reason why was that my spirit had picked it up. Listen, the answers you're looking for are ready in your spirit. All you have to do is to get it out by praying in tongues. That's all you have to do. What does praying in tongues do? do what, what does it do for you? When you pray in tongues, your spirit becomes sensitive to pick up ideas. I, I don't know if you have ever had a phone before and you've used the internet and some areas reception is good some other reception is not good what spraying in tongues does for you is that it puts you in the place of better reception I'm telling you all of a sudden people say how did you know you should position this way reception sir there was spiritual sensitivity. I know how to go. I know where to go. I know who to talk to. I know how to talk to them. How do I know? By the influence of the Holy Ghost. That's what happens. Oh, glory to God. I love the way Brother Hagin says it. He says, learn to raise up your spiritual antenna. How do you raise it up? He says, how do you pick signals in the spirit? How do you know what next to do? You raise up your spiritual antenna. How? By praying in tongues. By praying in tongues. 
by praying in tongues. As you pray in tongues, you're able to pick up signal. Your spirit becomes sensitive. You know what to do. You know how to do it. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, let's pick up signals. In Jesus' name. This morning I wanted to pray. And pray about what? I wanted to pray. I wanted to pray, really pray. And what do you want to pray about? I want to pray about the areas you have concern. Why? Holy Ghost, show me what to do. Because I'm the ghost for 22 hours. Show me what to do. Holy Ghost, give me light. Uh, hallelujah. Let's go ahead and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, Holy Ghost, as I pray today, shed light on my mind. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen, there are many dimensions to praying in tongues. One of the dimensions is to, you use praying in tongues to investigate things. And say, Lord, how do I go? Where do I go? You, you use, you, it's, it's like you're browsing the spirits. I love the word the Bible says. The Bible says, Simon, a prophet, they were searching their spirits. There's such a thing as searching your spirit. It's a, it's a spiritual word. There's such a thing as searching your spirit. You know the answer is there. But you're searching it. You're searching your spirit. You know that there's an answer to this funding problem. You don't know what it is, but the answer is in the spirit. You're searching your spirit. You know there's an answer to this delay. You, know what, you don't know what the answer is, but you're searching your spirit. How, about that? How do you search your spirit? By praying in the Holy Ghost. And let the spirit take you on the ride. Hallelujah. This is my prayer for you today. That you will know the next thing to do. You will know the next thing to say. You know what to connect to. That the future will unfold on before you like a calendar. You will take the right steps. You will not walk in the path of destruction. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will catch the spirit of prayer. In the name of Jesus. Thank you heavenly father. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 God bless me. Please have your seat. As we have our seat, I'm going to ask us to give our tithe and offering to the Lord this morning. And if you, have, if you have been blessed, I want to share on Instagram, share on Facebook, tag me. Let me know this. I blessed you. All of that received the Holy Ghost. Go back and listen again because I've taught you several things the Holy Ghost can do inside you. What, what speaking in tongues can do for you. And if you're not with the Holy Ghost, I want to be filled. Go back and watch last Sunday's message. Start by watching the Wednesday's message. Very powerful. Glory to God. Let's go ahead and give our tithe and offering. If you're tithing, stand on your feet as our culture is. If you're giving outside the country, the account gives are them. If you're giving a local church or you're giving within the country, they're all there. Let's go ahead and give. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to bring our tithe and offering before you. Lord, today we give in faith, believing that in Jesus' name as we give, that the windows of heaven will be opened and everyone walking in supernatural provision. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please go ahead and uh, go and do your giving. And if today is your first time in Harvesters, will you please raise up your high hands? Let's welcome you to church. Oh, glory to God. Thank you so much for coming. In our church, it's a place of connection. It's a place of transformation. It's a place of practical teaching of God's word. You have come to the right place. If you're online, there'll be, an, there'll, be, there'll be some information for you to fill and send back to us. And those of you offline in the fiscal center, please just go ahead and send us some information. Pick up the cats on the ushers and welcome you to church. Glory to God. Were you blessed this morning? I said, were you blessed this morning? Were you blessed this morning? Lift up your hands and just give him praise and glory as we welcome the choir. Hallelujah. 